Hello, YouTubers. This is a new session where we get to talk about, you know, a a different ways and different programming languages that can be used to implement the engineering standard or the standard for short. Today, I'm joined by a person that is super bright and I really respect him and I appreciate him, Mr. Evan Colson. How are you doing, Evan? I'm pretty good. How about you? Good, 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 good. Nice to meet you, brother. Uh, Evan yes. is super excited about um, uh, TypeScript, JavaScript, you know, working with different frameworks. He even went on and created his own uh, node uh, NPM packages and, you know, tried to kind of take all these concepts and ideas that we implement, you know, in, in the standard and C-sharp.net and bring it over to the TypeScript, JavaScript world. Uh, Evan, do you want to tell us first a little bit of, about yourself and uh, your motive to, you know, standardize the world? Go ahead. Uh, sure. So I, I guess also to, to preface too, I haven't put them out on MTM yet. Uh, they're most, they're just living inside of my project, but yep. they will, I will eventually move them out Eventually. Yep. Yep. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, so I guess a little bit about me. Uh, I don't know. I've, I've been building applications for a while, uh, probably what, it's 2022, probably about seven or eight years now, I've been, been doing web programming and I first got into it with, uh, with Node. Mm -hmm. um, that's when I started actually doing like server-side work and kind of, I feel like delving a bit more into what software engineering is. Mm -hmm. uh, the standard, standard really attracted me because I've worked like across a lot of different projects and I think the ones that I found easiest to get involved in are the ones that have been the most readable. And so I've kind of been on this like long journey going through figuring out my own ways of trying to make things super readable and coming across the standard. It overlapped with a lot of things that I had kind of felt uh, just like had this like vague feeling for what I was looking for. And mm -hmm. so I kind of decided to try running with it for some of my, some of my projects recently. All right. And it's been pretty good. I really enjoyed it. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. So you've been working on this project, you know, to kind of, uh, standardize i think it's a typescript project right so it's it's a little bit more type javascript kind of thing uh tell us a little bit more about that you know the components that you had to build what would the project look like you know if we take a look at it if you want to demo it for us yeah so i'll, I'll go ahead and share so it's inspired by the cloud foreign uh yeah, awesome. work that you've been doing yep i i was interested in trying to do it for this s3 um azure blob ah. like, have your blob storage and GCP uh, yeah. as well. So I have a GCP file storage, I think is what it is. Yeah. So I've been pretty interested in that. Um, yeah, let me just go ahead and kind of, yeah, I'm still situated here. Um, I guess, yeah, sorry, I lost my train of thought there for a second. Uh, so I see you have brokers, you have models, you have services. Okay. Yes. Awesome. Yes. Yeah, so it's kind of I'll kind of expand some of this out here. So I guess uh, I I took a little bit of a slight deviation with the way I've um kind of cut up my my libraries. Mm -hmm. I have them kind of in a domain specific way where it's like all the work that's done with like files and drives, which are yeah. these concepts I've kind of created where it's like, okay. Uh, Sure, S3 is an object storage and sure, Azure's blob storage, but we can kind of make this little abstraction where we can consider like each bucket like a, a drive on a computer. And mm -hmm. so that's kind of like mm -hmm. what I made that analogous to when files kind of represent blobs and and different and objects and file stores. Nice. So that's kind of goal of them. And so I wanted to make uh, the brokers and services specific to each of them. Yep. Uh, and then on top of that, I also have the libraries that, that we were talking about earlier. Yep. Uh, and going through going through some of that. Um, and it's one of the things that I've done too, that's sort of a work in progress because you've also been talking about this with uh, yep. the, the standard, even going yep. through and, and setting up those, trying to figure out the, the prettiest way, the prettiest way to uh, nice. do exception handling and try catch, like doing uh, exception handling, rollbacks, retries. Uh, so this is, this is kind of my approach. Yeah, uh, that I've taken for some of the operations. So, for instance, here, uh, I guess I'm going to go to a little bit of a, just a more straightforward one. So, the file service. This one's pretty pretty straightforward to look at, and I'm I'm happy with it. There's some things that I wish that I could tweak. It's like how it's dependent upon these objects. Mm -hmm. Things like partial classes would be really nice to have in this in this situation, but mm -hmm. we're making do, and it it transfers pretty well across to to, to TypeScript just by by creating objects for operations and validations. Nice. Um, so 
yeah, here here would be like getting a file from in this case uh, uh, S3 bucket. Mm -hmm. It's just taking you just have some logic here, and it takes this function as a as a lambda uh -huh. and patches it into the operations, which would in contain exception handlers, retries, and you can kind of expand it. I haven't I haven't gone through and added things like with retries or. Nice. Or with rollbacks. Yeah, that's okay. But, yeah, but those would be what I what I what I want to want to move towards once there's kind of more guidance, I guess, in in what the yeah what, what feels like the right approach. Yep, absolutely. And and by the way, just so you know, like even the standard community themselves, they're very they've been churning, like really thinking really hard about how we can kind of pass in uh, different aspects and different operations while leaving a trace at the top root level with the business logic. So there's been a lot of work going on there. You know to kind of make make sure this happens but uh this is this is beyond amazing so let me ask you this like if you go back to one of your services let's go to a foundation service sure. um so so this here just me this is basically me just being ignorant trying to understand things i'm assuming that this uh, iaws file broker that's injected right so this is an interface that you're injecting into your constructor and yes. then and then once you inject that, what what do you, like do you get to use it whatever you want just by doing that? Like this file broker now is accessible anywhere, or how do you use it? The file broker. So the file broker, uh, it's just passed into the constructor. I can go to the interface here. Um, yeah. Right now, I don't have any dependency injection framework because it's there's not um, a standard one that's built into into Node. Um, there's some that I've been researching and, and I've used on other projects. And yeah. I've been deciding whether or not those are a good fit or something more standard compliant would be, would be something interesting to write. So I've, I've been considering writing um, a standardized uh, dependency injection framework for that. But nice. as of right now, it's just creating creating the objects and then passing it in through the constructor. Um, but yeah, if you give it this, uh, any object of, with, this, with this interface that it's implementing, you can, you can use it anywhere in the service uh, nice. and anywhere, anywhere in any of the other services as well. So, so this okay. file broker is still accessible anywhere in the service. Like if you go inside retrieve file async, it'll let you kind of. Oh, oh, oh I see what you're saying. Sorry. Uh, no, not in this case. You'd have to inject it into this as well, which is one of the problems uh -huh. with this design that I've I've been encountering. Okay. Um, because okay. like things like that, if you wanted to pass like a logging broker in for doing exception handling, that's that's kind of something I've been thinking about a bit today, and I'm not sure what, what the best way to do that is because. It just feels like there's you end up with a lot of nesting kind of, and it it feels like it's violating a bit of like the the rule of three, that 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 exists. Okay, okay, so so um, okay, so there's still some kind of challenges and problems that, and that's okay, you know, like yeah. by the way, like just so you know, the idea that. This is this goes under a project called the Standard Universal, right? Which is basically mm -hmm. being able to express the the standard concepts in uh, different languages and different technologies and all that. Uh, what I can do, like these, are definitely things that we want the community to kind of think about, you know, high level and try to kind of, you know, process and see the the kind of problems that we can solve. Because you still want to be able to go and say, like, you already figured out this try catch with exception handler. You're just passing in a a a a funk what we call a funk it's basically I, I don't know what it would be called an action or something like that but you know it's you're passing that in and you're basically handling these exceptions and all that can you can you tell us a little bit more about testing what does testing look like in this particular stance sure so similarly to uh the standard i've broken it up into like the the happy path testing with just the main service one so uh like one of them here, if we went and looked at retrieve file, mm -hmm. uh, I'm using a library that is similar to I don't remember what it's called. Like yeah, mock, mock. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's called TS Mockito. Uh, okay. Yeah. TS oh, Mockito. TS Mockito is like Mockito, but for JavaScript. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Mockito so, is very clean. I've been playing around with it in different languages, like uh, the the uh, the Kotlin. Uh, go, mm. sorry, not go. Kotlin and Scala and Java recently. So yeah, I, I I can testify. This is a pretty neat, pretty neat library. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I so I, yeah. I think I think the person that that wrote it, they uh, I don't know if they they they're directly related to Mockito, but they have enough functionality for it for it to work, and it mimics the same interface. So it's it's a 
pretty handy to work with. Um, there's a few few things that are weird about it that I don't like. Um, mm. Like it always checks by reference. It doesn't check like actually compare any of the values the value? um, uh, for for like verifications of, of functions being called, which yeah. can be a bit annoying sometimes. Um, but like there's there's kind of ways to get around it, but it's kind of something that's like in my backlog of of what I'd like to change uh, about this library. But okay, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay. So here's kind of what the testing would look like, I guess. Um, I tried to make it look very similar to what I was seeing with the C sharp standard because I feel like there's there's a lot of crossover between the two languages. Okay, okay. So this is the testing part. You have the test when, and then you're calling the service, and then the expectations that's your given when and then nice yep. nice nice this is very very sweet and you can mock it and you can mock the broker oh man this is see even for someone who's never kind of worked with typescript or javascript you know they can kind of figure out what's going on you know high level i can understand what you're trying to accomplish which is one of the big benefits of uh, standardizing software and the importance of it Okay, what else do you want to tell us about? Yeah, sure. Uh, I guess some of the more interesting things I can kind of talk about because it's mostly foundational stuff that I've been doing. Like I, uh -huh. unfortunately, don't have too much time since I'm still in school um, to to be developing this as much as I'd like. But I guess some of the interesting things is uh, let me go to one of the tests that's actually dealing with exceptions. So like this is one of the validation tests. Um, so people who are familiar with with Jest, um, uh -huh. typically how you how you test for some kind of error would be uh, like you give it some some function that will it it's you expect it to throw, um, and then you'll be like you'll expect it to throw and give it some kind of error, uh -huh. which is super awesome and great and it works. It'll check that it's thrown and it'll check that the uh, instance types match that uh -huh. like it's throwing an error when I give it an error. Um, but if I have things like details on it, like we have with the exception library, cause I've, I've written out this, nice. uh, this model here, which nice. is doing a lot of the similar thing. It's, it's, uh, almost it's exact like replica. Yeah. 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 Yep. Nice. Yeah. Um, nice. and one of the things that I needed to include too, cause JavaScript has, you know, some pretty weird quirks to it is you can throw anything, right? You can throw a number, you can throw a string, you can, you can just throw whatever you want. So one of the helpful things that I added in for JavaScript was just this little static method on top of exception that takes anything and, and will convert it into a standard exception. <laughs> nice, <Yeah>. nice. <laughs> that is that is coming handy because it's just, it can be a bit painful. Um, but anyways, so one of the things that I, I ended up doing was adding in this extension here called mm -hmm. to throw exception, which has a, a synchronous and asynchronous uh just, just like to, a mock library you basically yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah so i can hop into this oh right and so one of the things that you have to do is i have to extend just to, to include these as types yep yep uh and hopping in here so yeah in this case here it's like uh this is the synchronous implementation and so i since like i'm I don't have the access to uh, the operations library they have, which if I look at one of the operations files, like there's this create async runtime. Mm -hmm. um, since all these libraries that I've built up, they don't, I, I'm considering like the create async runtime and the exception handlers that are in in here that are doing like this try catch logic. Um, mm -hmm. So like doing all this, I, I'm considering these kind of like higher level building blocks um, and I don't have access to them in the libraries just to prevent any circular dependencies that that could that could pop up. Uh, so in these like kind of lower level libraries, they look a bit more uh, rugged since yeah. since I don't have that. But it goes through. It'll check that the action's a function. Um, check that an exception is what's being passed in to to be expected because you can pass anything in sometime nice. with with Jest. Um, is this single quote like the interpolation thing? Like you can interpolate, or does it just print as is? Like just it's, as uh, it's as is. So, and the interpolation in TypeScript is uh, like, like uh, dollar sign or 
yeah you, you do like a tick okay like back that tick. yeah it's back ticks so it'd be, it'd be like that uh i think for standard javascript programs it or well not standard because there's just different different style guides for javascript that people follow i think for google's style guide uh they use they use single quotes um yep. Yep. So that's the one I'm, I'm most familiar with so i've been kind of mimicking the standard that you've written and also trying to follow similar conventions for like uh just syntax and file naming for yep. and it's true. like 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 if for like every language has its own kind of convention in a way, right? We yeah. respect that. We respect that convention as long as it makes sense. Like, you know, we will see a lot of languages, they don't actually have a proper way to express an interface, right? Yeah. So they will go and say dog and then dog implementation. It's just yes. really not, it's, it's not what I'm trying to do, right? It's not yeah. really what I'm trying to do. Uh, their argument is that, you know, you need to find, a generic way to describe your interface, but I need to be able to tell it's an interface just by looking at the type, right? Without needing yeah. an IDE or a compiler or anything to tell me that this is an interface. But uh, yeah, totally, totally acceptable. I understand there are certain naming conventions that we have to respect so we can kind of find the common ground between us. You know, as long as it makes sense, you have to understand the rules, yeah. you know where to break it, like my friend David Pilar would say, but yeah, I got it. I got it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, I, I agree. It's just like, it, I feel like it's just like, yeah, once you find the right balance between the two, it just, it becomes very readable, especially too with people who are, like you're saying, like are, are familiar with the languages. It's, it's, it's just small differences that don't affect the semantics behind what you're writing. It's just syntactual. So, so let me tell you this, ideally I want to be able to, so well, first of all, let me ask you this, is this project something that's people can take a look at in the open source space or is it still kind of closed, you know, private, something like that? Uh, no, it, it's, it's open on my GitHub. I, I've called it cloud OS because I feel like it's kind of like uh, just an abstraction on top of all these cloud providers. Yep, so it yep. feels a bit like an operating system. That's, that's literally um, cloud, cloud for and mean. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. So it's, it's up on my GitHub um, and public. I, I, I typically don't really keep any of my repositories private. Uh, I just like, people to be able to see what's going on in, in any of my work. Nice, nice. Okay, is there any, like, okay, so let me ask you this. What are the most challenging things about trying to kind of, you know, uh, implement the standard in TypeScript and Node.js? Like, what's what's the biggest hurdle at the moment? Something for the community kind of help you and cheer it on and kind of think <laughs> about as well. Yeah. I think fall like the way that the standard is written and given that Microsoft has made TypeScript to kind of mimic some of the features of C sharp, um, it's been re relatively straightforward to, to actually convert between the two. Uh, I think one of the things that's been kind of difficult and clunky is like what I was mentioning earlier with this and like finding a good alternative to partial classes. Um, because it feels weird having this extra object that I have to instantiate in all my classes and mm -hmm. just to do the validations. But when I leave it all in here, it distracts from the business logic that's happening. So it's been, I've been trying to figure out what the right balance is. And I think that this is an okay balance for now, but I, I've only had my own opinion on this. So really, I guess I'm looking for feedback from others who are interested in TypeScript or the standard in general and are, are able to give some feedback on kind of how they'd envision this and something similar to C sharp, but yeah. also has overlaps with Java, which also doesn't have partial classes, but has an object oriented approach to it. Yeah, that that partial class part is the part because of the and I see how you kind of worked around that by basically going and saying, okay, fine, I'll create an like a new type, you know, that yeah. honors the name but still has validations, operations. I see I see how you did this. You know, um, it's quite interesting though because um, I think par I think a lot of languages could benefit from partialization. And I'm going to be honest with you, I'm still thinking about how can I explain partialization to someone who does not work with C sharp and and someone who like how can you extend an existing class without inheritance, right? Or without yeah. implementation, without ex you know, you're 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 just basically saying it's the same code, right? It's the same page, right? Yeah, it's just breaking it up into 
multiple books, I guess, if you're thinking of it in pages. <laughs> so, so let me ask you this. If you, if you type in export class AWS file service implements IAWS file service again on top of this one, does it error out? Uh, yeah, it should, it should be pretty unhappy with you. <laughs> because it's, it's like, hey, got, I've already got this here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you can't re can't redo you can't redefine it in in this file, uh, but you can redefine it elsewhere. So like if I went over to uh, maybe in this validations file, I can I can pop that in there, no issues. But in the same file, you know, you know it'll uh, won't be too happy with you. And then if you compile and and the I guess transpile, they will collide. They will clash. They will basically say, hey, which one do you actually mean? Uh, that's that's the problem. Yeah, I, yeah. If you have, yeah, there's because there is namespacing in TypeScript. I just haven't made use of it before. You know, another thought that I have that comes to mind, just just something that I'm thinking about is to be yeah. able. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, let me show you here. So. An idea, yeah. So an idea that I have is Notepad. What do you think about this, Evan? If we go and say, okay, for for places that doesn't honor partialization, it's just really raw pseudo code. Mm -hmm. So think about this idea because this this kind of can be implemented for most for multiple languages, right? It can be implemented across multiple languages. What yeah. we really what we're really looking for here is basically a container. A container that will allow us later to kind of collect the parts. So imagine that you have some container, right? And this container, you know, takes in params of, uh, 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 let's say, services, mm. right? So this guy takes in multiple classes, right, into one container. And then what this guy does underneath is that it merges them together. So he goes and says, okay, for every piece, for every service that I have in here, I want to basically join these services, join all of them together. So they mm -hmm. become just one code base. This way, when you're actually using this, you can basically go and say, well, you know, container, and then basically uh, you open this, and then you go and say, um, export, uh, a class, uh, uh, AWS service, something like that. And then you're mm -hmm. basically writing your service, right? The trick here is to be able to kind of go and say, okay, I have this container that's defined at the root and this container has a bunch of files and each one of these files kind of get, get mushed up together. And I know that JavaScript could do this because mm -hmm. um, it, it certainly can. So you have this guy, and then in here, you could go and say container again, you know, you have another class and it would be nice if we even get, get rid of the class completely because the container is the class and we're just passing blocks of code inside of it, mm -hmm. right? So you're basically going and saying, here's a bunch of blocks of code that I want to pass inside of it, you know, and now all you got to do is just go and say, you know, this, this is our, our logic. This is our, you know, um, something like service validation. You know, this is our um, exceptions. That would play the role of like file names and stuff like that. So you know which is mm. which. And then what this guy does is that it goes and takes that code and passes this logic, whatever goes in here, inside of the exceptions guy. Just an idea. Yeah. Just, just some crazy idea, right? You know, yeah. something. Like if I were to solve this problem, my brain would go in that in that direction, right? In fact, actually, I don't know. Do you have enums in TypeScript? There are enums. Oh, you can you could then you can just yeah, you know, you could basically enum and say logic. So this way, you don't have people kind of typing by hand. Yeah. And then what this guy is going to do is that it's going to go and say, oh, where's your logic? Where's your validations? Where's where's this and that? Let me go push them all together. Mm. Right. Okay. Well, closest. Yeah. That. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, that that seems doable. I think I think you can change the prototypes of of like if you gave the container uh, the class name that you wanted to have, like if you like gave it 
container class AWS service comma the block of code that you want to include and then the last parameter being what what type it is you should be able to to set the prototype of that class to contain all of the methods that you have uh, in each of those classes so that actually does seem that actually does seem doable and would be really interesting to look into so that's something that we can kind of discuss um, what I want to do with you though next is to be able to kind of start from the ground up, like, you know, just mm -hmm. to give people a very simple uh, broker, right? That yeah. returns whatever gets passed to it. You know, we build a service, we inject the broker into the service, run the test. Let's just start there. And then we build on top of it. This would be a whole part of this uh, project. But as you and I are exploring this and doing this together, you know, we're we're solving problems as we go. Because yeah. I think just by talking to people like this, and I, I can guarantee you, man, like 90% of the things that come to mind comes to mind because you are talking to different engineers from different skill sets and different disciplines and different languages. This is an opportunity that engineers don't get to have. Like normally engineers are confined within a community or a group of engineers that are focused on one technology or one language or one principle or one discipline, right? But that's nonsense. You got to open your heart and open your mind, learn from everybody, and then find the best thing that fits one universal, unique standard that can help help everybody. Mm -hmm. Evan, this is really fun. I really appreciate, yes. you know, the time and effort that you're putting into this. Also, like, I, I love the fact that you're not just saying, okay, can I implement the standard in TypeScript and Node.js? Can I actually implement the cloud foreign principle, you know, across the board? I think that's that's a huge, huge advantage uh, for, for the TypeScript, Node.js community, but also this, like, you are now at this point where you're building something that we're going to have to port over to C Sharp because we're still kind of working with queues and there's this project called Lake U where yeah. we're trying to do all that. There's some crazy magic that we're doing in there. And hopefully we can kind of, this is, this is perfect. This is amazing. All right. Uh, last okay. remarks, anything for the community? Uh, I, <laughs> I guess, I don't know. I guess just keep on building. It's been really yeah. fun joining the community. Um, yeah. Like I've been, I read through the Discord pretty much most of my lunches to catch up on what's been going on. Um, every everything's just been really fascinating. Uh, like you, like you said, it's just uh, very fortunate that we have the technology to communicate with other engineers that are not just working on one discipline. Because um, like my, it's it's hard to like you're not talking to other engineers when you're in school. You're working with professors that are very much research based and into computer science, so finding people to talk to about software as a student is also pretty hard. Yeah. Uh, so so having this standard community to kind of go into, and I've, I've directed some of my friends to it as well to like yeah. kind of give yeah. them some 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 hopeful help. I don't know how much I actually yeah. help, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I don't know. It's just uh, as someone who's entering the industry, it's been it, it's been uh, very helpful. I think that the goal that you're you're trying to set for introducing people to it is, is definitely there. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, as usual, you know, I, I really welcome and it's such a pleasure to just uh, kind of see different, you know, ideas and aspects. There are people that are trying this in PHP. Uh, we already have uh, Felipe who was, try who was doing it in R. Like, you I know, saw that. Even, yeah. that, that. That's a little, see, we have a bunch of mad scientists running around. Yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> definitely, definitely Wardy. Wardy is a mad scientist. He's trying to yeah. do serverless architecture within one single infrastructure component, which I'm just... Like it was two in the morning and I'm thinking to myself, oh, why did you put that idea in my head? Now I'm not going to be able to sleep. But uh, the community is very active and people are really happy about, you know, kind of exploring ideas because a lot of people just don't get to do that in a day job, yeah. right? In your day job, ah, just move the data around and fix the bugs and get yeah. your promoted, nah. you know, but this is, this is more like an ongoing 365 days a year, 24 seven hackathon. Like yeah. people are just around the clock. You know, there's new ideas, new innovations, and we're also pushing progress. Like some of the stuff that we're building, like out of that community, we have at least like four libraries now. And we're working on this OData Neo, which is going to basically change everything for data community. I can't wait to see an adaptation for this in JavaScript TypeScript. That'll be very, very interesting. Exposing an OData endpoint throat Node.js. Yes, I'm pretty sure there's something out there. Uh, but doing it in OData Neo fashion, that'd be super interesting. Anyway. 
my dear brother, thank thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I look forward to doing like a quick a part of the standard universal, you know, a quick demo of hey, here's a broker, here's an interface, let's inject that smart gate, run it, boom. You have a yeah. passing test. Just start simple, start small, and then build on top of it. The more and more uh, different languages and different communities adapt the standard, the much more fun and joyous it's going to be their experience into building systems. So they don't have to be depressed every day, try to go to work, try to understand what's going on. Uh, yeah. Thank you so much. And of course, you know, for, for the people watching us, if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or compliments from Mr. Evan here, my dear friend, uh, please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to like and subscribe. See you in another video. Take care. Thank you, Evan. <laughs> Thank you.